Whether you're a coincidencer or a synchronetician, uh, you can probably tell I just made those up. Uh, I want to leave you with just, uh, I want to leave you just a little bit more perplexed tonight. Now, if you recall the definition of synchronicity that I showed earlier, here's my own example of some concurrent events that may or may not be connected by meaning, a possible case of synchronicity. Concurrent event number one. Some of you re may remember from the October presentation where we first introduced the idea of the cognitive neural-based heart and the recently discovered electromagnetic field that emanates from the heart. This EM field extends upward and outward from the body, sometimes to a radius of 30 feet. The basic structure of this EM field is a geometric form called a torus, and it has a very unique motion signature, which I'll share with you in a moment. Concurrent event number two. In that same presentation about the neural-based heart, I also shared a complementary scientific theory from another eminent theoretical physicist, Dr. David Bohm. Now, Dr. Bohm questioned how simple electromagnetic activity in our brain and other neural fields transforms into complex human consciousness. He theorized that limited electromagnetic neural activity must have an unseen quantum dimension that enables our virtually unlimited cerebral capacities. In essence, he proposed the existence of a quantum dimension of consciousness. Does that sound familiar? The neural EM field emanating from the heart becomes even more intriguing when thought of as a detectable external medium for quantum-based consciousness. Let's have another look at it. Concurrent event number three. Now, while I was studying Albert Einstein's influence on Carl Jung, it was fascinating to gain a better understanding of what we call space-time. Now, it's a relativity-inspired term to describe the interaction of space, time, and gravity. This is a simple model or simple picture of Einstein's space-time model. It depicts the effect of a central gravitational force on the movement of objects around the source. It also illustrates the influence of the gravitational source on the shape of the surrounding space as you move closer to it. For example, we know that light itself actually changes shape under the influence of gravity. The simple mechanics of this model uh, are similar to a heavy ball resting in the middle of a rubber sheet with a smaller ball rolling around the outer, outer edge of the sheet. As long as the smaller ball maintains a certain critical distance from the center, it can remain in a stable, consistent orbit. However, if for some reason the smaller ball loses horizontal momentum, vertical momentum takes over and it will be pulled downward toward the axis, eventually colliding with the heavier ball. What struck me about the space-time model is the motion signature of horizontal and vertical forces interacting around a shared focal point or central axis. Einstein's space-time model is the basic foundation of modern astrophysics, but it is the quantum physics of Wolfgang Pauli and others that have provided the detailed understanding of energy and matter, which has led us to the next transformation of the space-time model. This is concurrent event number four. Now, these are simple images <clears throat> of the new quantum physics model of space-time. The first image is of uh, what we call a black hole. Next to it is the connected image of what we call a wormhole, or an inversion of two black holes. Now, the visionary work of quantum physicists like Wolfgang Pauli has given modern astrophysicists a new theoretical template to explain how black holes and wormholes might actually operate. So far, over 100 years after Einstein's first theory of relativity, advances in technology have enabled us to investigate and verify some of this new theoretical template. Key aspect of the black hole model continues to be the unique interaction of the horizontal and vertical forces around a central axis or focal point. The theoretical outcome of this interaction of forces is the possibility that black holes are actually the entry and exit points of wormholes to another part of the universe. Now, we are fascinated by the idea of these entry and exit points to another dimension. They represent possible intake and outflow points for some kind of cosmic exchange system. 
This model is no doubt science today, but remember, it began as a vision decades before it became science. 